welcome to the Daily Decrypt, where even currencies, especially currencies, are expected to compete. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by Exmo. Oodle lolly, it is my great pleasure to inform you that the world's first decentralized crypto and fiat exchange, called BitSquare, is set to launch in beta next week. Here to tell us more is BitSquare founder and lead developer, Manfred Carrere. First of all, what is BitSquare and what is your relation to the project? Yeah, so BitSquare is a decentralized Bitcoin exchange, both for national currency as well as altcoins. And uh, I'm the founder of BitSquare and the main developer. So it's basically a community project. So uh, there are other contributors as well, but most of the work was done by me. And I started uh, more or less uh, two and a half year ago with the project. And uh, since three months, it's already uh, uh, running on mainnet and uh, we're doing a lot of tests. And next week on the 27th, uh, of April, uh, we will have the beta launch. So it will be really public for the masses and hopefully the masses will come. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what's uh, special in BitSquare, what makes it different to other normal exchanges is of course the fact that it's completely decentralized. That means uh, it's decentralized in the infrastructure. So we're using a custom peer-to-peer -peer network over Tor to hidden services to be uh, concrete. <clears throat> and uh, But no worry, nobody need to install Tor or to set up anything. It's integrated in BitSquare, so it just works without any, any extra setup. It's a desktop application, so you just download it, install it for any operating system, and run it. That's it. <clears throat> uh, it's, yeah, the decentralization part. Uh, BitSquare is never holding any users' funds, so the, the Bitcoin are either on your local wallet or they are locked in a multi-sig uh, transaction and that's uh, yeah that's the security model <clears throat> so we use a two or three multi-sig so when you're doing a trade uh, the funds of both users get to that multi-sig and uh, when the trade is settled so when the fiat is transferred and everything is fine then the funds get paid out to the bitcoin buyer from this multi-sig so BitSquare is never holding the funds and has uh, basically also don't know about the trades. And that's the, uh, the next point that it protects the privacy of the users. So BitSquare is never holding any data. You don't need to register. You just download it, start it, and that's it. So there's no verification, no, no, uh, no your customer or AML. Uh, requirements and that's possible because uh, BitSquare is not holding funds. So I was talking to lawyers who were working at, at uh, regulation authorities for financial markets, so really specialists, and they told me uh, as long as the exchange is not holding funds and as long as the exchange is not doing the automatic order matching, which is also a point where you need to trust the exchange that they are not uh, scamming their customers, then there are no regulation requirements. We also asked uh, directly in London, or in England, to UK authorities if, if uh, when BitSquare would be registered in, in England as a company, if there would be any regulation requirements, and they told us no. At least at the moment, there uh, would be not requirements for such an exchange because it's really decentralized. And... Wow, so fiat and not only Bitcoin, but also other cryptocurrencies can all be exchanged on this peer to peer protocol using two of three multi signature accounts to act as escrow. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. So, for the security mechanisms are based on three parts <coughs> uh, one is this two of three uh, multi sig, where the two traders are the key holders. And when everything goes fine, there is never a third party included. And the third key holder uh, is the arbitrator. Uh, also, there is uh, planned a fully decentralized arbitration system. It's in OpenBazaar for the people who are familiar with OpenBazaar, they call it Mediator. So it's very similar. <clears throat> so if every, anything goes wrong that I send you the money, but you never receive it because the bank were too stupid to send the money to you or whatever, then uh, you can call the arbitrator. The arbitrator tries to find out what was going on. And if there is a dispute that uh, we don't agree, uh, or maybe I tried to scam you or whatever, <clears throat> then the arbitrator has the third key. So he's able to uh, to make the payout with the honest trader. And uh, to not have a single point of failure with the arbitration system, that should be a completely decentralized system as well. So anybody could become an arbitrator. They are anonymous, basically. 
and to avoid that they are colluding with the other trader and scam another trader, they need to pay a, a quite high security deposit, which get locked in the arbitrators with the highest uh, reputation. And yeah, it's a little bit complex uh, uh, concept or, or uh, area, but basically for the users, they should normally never get in touch with arbitrators because when there are no, uh, when there are no technical problems and when there are no scams, the arbitrator does not play any role. And when there are too many scams, we have another problem. We have to find out where are the weak points and how to solve it in another way. And yeah, the other uh, security mechanisms are a security deposit. That's a small amount, but even when you're buying Bitcoin, you need to pay up a small amount, which get locks in this multisig as well. <clears throat> and that uh, it's an incentive that you are following the trade protocol because without this uh, security deposit, you could start a trade. And then when you need to pay the fiat money, you just uh, vanish and you don't continue and the other need to wait until the period is over and ask the arbitrator. Then it's a question who pays the arbitrator because the other, you have uh, uh, disappeared and uh, your uh, funds are not accessible to the arbitrator. So does the deposit go into the two of three multisig? Is that where it goes? Yeah, exactly. That. <clears throat> I suppose traders have to pay this security deposit and the seller is putting uh, his trade amount when he's selling one Bitcoin, then uh, the one Bitcoin of the seller plus the security deposit of both traders goes as input to the, uh, to the multisig. <clears throat> And when the uh, seller has received the fiat amount or the altcoin, then he confirms it in the application. And then uh, there is created a payout transaction with the keys of both traders and the buyer receives uh, the money and wow. also the, the trade amount and both receive the security deposit back. So the security deposit is only locked for the time of the trade, which can be as short as more or less one Bitcoin confirmation where you use a payment method, which is, uh, Settling instantly, like OKP okay, or Perfect Money, <clears throat> you can really make the transaction instantly and when both are online and then you only need to wait for one blockchain confirmation on the Bitcoin blockchain. And when you have luck, it's just a few seconds, <clears throat> sometimes 10 minutes or whatever, or average 10 minutes. And then um, the trade is basically done. Uh, and the end. importantly, I've seen that uh, some people think that the fiat or the cryptocurrency transfer is done in BitSquare, that's not the case. And that makes it much easier to develop. To develop. Otherwise, it would be a, a much bigger project or much more difficult or impossible. Mm -hmm. so, so would eat, would, would one side of every trade, whether people are tra trading fiat or trading other cryptocurrencies, does one side of every trade need to be in Bitcoin in order for the two of three multi-sig to work? Exactly, because uh, this uh, security mechanism is implemented in Bitcoin. Basically, mm -hmm. theoretically, you could use any other altcoin which are support supporting multisig as well, but mm -hmm. it would be a lot of development effort and not worth to do it. So you cannot trade uh, Ethereum for euro or for dollar, for instance, directly, but you can trade Ethereum to Bitcoin and then Bitcoin to euro, mm -hmm. euro or dollar. Wow. Uh, Okay, so Manfred, this is like definitely the first of its kind, correct? Like I'm not, I'm not missing anything. Like this is definitely a world's first if it works on the 27th. I think, yeah, it works already. At the end, I mean, the exchange uh, works already since more than a year, but I was using another peer-to-peer -peer network a year ago and that never really worked well in the wild west of the internet. So I, I needed to change the peer-to-peer -peer network and that cost me another half a year. And so it's, yeah, it's working basically, of course, it takes time for bootstrapping and so on, and will be a longer process to be really bulletproof. Uh, but it's already, I think 200 trades have done, have been done in the last weeks already. There are at the moment, I think something like 50 or 20, no, I don't know, uh, 30, 40 uh, offers online. 34 online right now. But, yeah, yeah, also uh, offers so people who are making an offer. It's like in local, for the people who are familiar with local Bitcoin, <clears throat> it's a similar uh, concept that you are making your, uh, I think they call it advertising. Mm -hmm. uh, so you make your offer, I want to buy uh, one Bitcoin for 200 euro, but nobody will take it because, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you have to pay probably a little bit, a little bit more. And okay. uh, when somebody uh, like, likes your price, he can take your offer or can make another 
offer himself and so there is not uh, not like in a normal centralized exchange where the offers get matched automatically mm -hmm. that's not the case here because uh, yeah that would not work with uh, with that model it's more like local bitcoin where the fiat transfer is done out of system you you receive the necessary data to make the fiat transfer so the name and the bank account of the other peer then you do the transfer you confirm it in the application the other get the message and uh, then the other re uh, have to check his bank account when he has received the money he confirms as well and then everything is done mm -hmm. but important is that and that for me one of the of the main goals of the application also <clears throat> to make it as user friendly as possible so you never have to do anything by email send anything around it's everything done in the application what's possible just those parts like doing the fiat payment that would be at least for now uh, not feasible these fiat payments can be, I mean, any way that one can send fiat to another person. So like what, like a bank wire, a bank transfer, a, a Western Union or MoneyGram transfer even, or even like depositing like paper money at someone else's bank account branch. I mean, any of these things are possible? At the moment, we have implemented uh, for in Europe, SEPA is very the common way how you transfer money over banks. Then we have national bank <coughs> transfer where with some extra selection where you can define a specific banks because in some countries the fees uh, between the uh, different banks are different so you prefer to just make the transfer to the same bank to uh, not pay too much fees and uh, OKPay okay and Perfect Money which are payment processors uh, especially OKPay okay is great because it's uh, bank charge, uh, chargeback free so that's the best option at the end for such an exchange and it's instant and then we have uh, one mobile uh, processor <coughs> from sweden and alipay the chinese and we will add more in future it's it's the ongoing work to investigate uh, all the details as we want to be sure that the risk for chargeback is uh, ne is nearly zero or very low because something like paypal where it's very easy to make a chargeback mm -hmm. would be too problematic mm -hmm. and when you look at local bitcoin they support paypal but there are nearly no uh, sellers. They're just buyers and no <laughs> seller because the seller risk that they have to make the chargeback and then <laughs> he has all the problems. So that doesn't make much sense for such an exchange. So we only uh, try to support those who are supporting hard money. And it's, of course, it's, it's a scale. Uh, so perfect hard money is just other cryptocurrencies and seems that OKB is really chargeback free but all others might be charged back when there is in some special cases, but at least it's very hard and very should be very rare. Wow. All right, so let's talk about somebody who would want to use BitSquare. Is, is installing it and running it similar to, say, like OpenBazaar? Like uh, if you want to be online and using it, you can have the client open. And if not, you can close the client and you know, it's not some, do you, does one need to keep it running all of the time? I'm assuming not. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's just an application for downloading and installing. So it's running on all operating system. And it, don't, it does not have any requirements for anything else. <clears throat> you don't need to register, you just can start. You only need to add your, uh, when you want to make a trade, you need to add your bank account details. When it's a, when you use bank account as the payment method or when you use an altcoin, you put your altcoin address in <clears throat> because that will be exchanged to the other trader. Mm -hmm. And then you can start. So there is no, yeah, no reg registration or anything. <clears throat> and when you are uh, putting an offer uh, to, the, to the offer book, then your client need to stay online because it's a real peer-to-peer -peer application. So there are no servers or whatever. So mm -hmm. and uh, when somebody is taking your offer, then there is a trade protocol executed. Uh, the other trader is contacting your client and exchanging the messages and creating this multi-sig transaction. And for that, your client need to be online. You mm -hmm. don't have, you can sleep, no worry. But uh, <laughs> the computer should not be in standby because normally with standby, you lose internet connection and then it could not work anymore. So when you're shutting down your uh, application, your offer gets removed from the other because some somebody else could not take your offer when you are not online. Mm -hmm. That's a, a restriction for the moment. There are ideas to how to solve this for later, but it's a little bit complex and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe in a half a year or mm -hmm. in a year, we have other solutions. Mm -hmm. So how, or rather, how many other cryptocurrencies aside from Bitcoin uh, will be supported outright? How many are supported? 
Yeah, at the moment we try to add uh, for for the launch already uh, all relevant currencies. I mean, of course, every every um, how community many, will How say, many is yeah. that? Is that like five, ten? <laughs> no, uh, I think twenty-two are now supported, oh, wow. and all the big ones like Ethereum, uh, Counterpart, Index, uh, BitShares, whatever. Uh -huh. uh, money. And, uh, uh, unfortunately, I cannot support at the moment uh, crypto note coins, which are one of my favorites, like Monero. But the uh, Monero, at least, will be added soon, hopefully. But it needs a little bit extra handling because they have some special software. Yeah, where I need the extra handle and some mm. extra effort. But I would like to get them in soon as well. And mm -hmm. basically, I'm open to any. I don't make the politics, even if I don't like one currency. <clears throat> as long as it's not the clear scam coin, I will add it. I just probably will make a small rule set. For instance, that, that the currency, when somebody asking me uh, at XXX coin, and nobody's interested in the XXX coin, <laughs> but uh, they want it, okay, I add it, but they have to at least uh, promote something on their web page that BitSquare is an official exchange for them mm -hmm. and that there's happening something because otherwise it's just waste of energy, uh, of resources because when when we are supporting thousands of coins and you have a long list and you don't find your really favorite coins because it's a jungle uh, it's a damage for everybody so i want to keep this resource uh yeah in, in a ration um, yeah something sensefully uh, amount that there may be 50 coins all in all and when i see that coins are never used for trades they get removed again mm -hmm. so it should be only used for those who are really interested to use and support it also and as hmm. We are, it's a community project. We are, we don't have but budget for uh, professional PR or whatever. So we are also dependent that the other uh, who uh, who benefit from BitSquare, like other altcoins, are doing some support and some uh, yeah, some promotion and and push the, the coin as well. And I've seen it already from Faircoin, for instance, or Sia Coin. They already started to uh, to promote it and to help and. Uh, mm -hmm. And now is. Is there any monetization in this for you, Manfred, or are you just like independently wealthy and doing this for shits and giggles? I mean, are, <laughs> is there going to be a return on investment for you? Yeah, so that's a, a very good question because uh, that's actually one important part of the decentralization because when uh, BitSquare is not a, a venture capital funded startup or whatever with intention because <clears throat> that would introduce uh, some dependencies and at the end single point of failures. And uh, BitSquare also uh, will not become a, a registered company or whatever. <clears throat> like Bitcoin is not a company. It's an open source project where anybody uh, can contribute and can uh, yeah, work on it or fork it or whatever and uh, to create incentives for the people who are working on it and also to get some return for myself <clears throat> for all the work that I've done. Uh, yeah, uh, so the business model is to take the trading fees. Also, uh, when you create an offer, when you take an offer, you pay a very tiny amount of trading fee. At the moment, it's nearly nothing. It's more or less like the mining fees. Mm -hmm. And uh, later, it will be a little bit more, but it will be uh, under the range, other than the classical range of, uh, of the fees what other exchanges take. Mm -hmm. And these fees will go, so I will create a DAO, a Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which uh, <clears throat> basically works in the way <clears throat> that um, the shareholders of this DAO will, um, yeah, the, the shares are represented as a kind of a color coin, <clears throat> and uh, the trading fees will get directly from the trader to one of the shareholders, depending on their percentage. So when you have 10% of the DAO, you re, uh, you receive, in average, 10% uh, of the trading fees. Mm -hmm. So that's the business model, and yeah, and I hope that I can attract more developers, more people contributing. Mm -hmm. uh, when they see that it's not only a donation, where uh, when people are donating, they don't expect uh, yeah, the normal way that you never get anything back. Uh, so it does not scale very much. There are not too many people who are so altruistic to donate uh, without expecting anything. Mm -hmm. But to have an, a, a form of investment model where people who are contributing, they become uh, yeah, uh, co-owners. Uh, yeah, it's like a public company at the end where the shareholders are the owners of the of the project. Uh, then it's, I think it's interesting incentive to contribute to the project and make it possible for many people because when you have a family, you need your income, you cannot spend your time uh, working on such a project. And at the end, it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm working 12 hours a day since a year, uh, yeah, 
probably nearly all two years. So it's it's a lot of effort. Uh, good software is not growing on trees, and uh, <laughs> to find find uh, professional contributors, good developers, and so they are especially in the Bitcoin space. It's super hard to find those. The competition is you are in the competition with the big companies, with the big banks, and the we see funded companies. So it's pretty hard to find those people. But uh, I think BitSquare has uh, some good incentives, not only from the ideological part that it's really a fully decentralized and privacy protecting project, but it also uh, yeah, tries to offer a fair uh, ownership, distributed ownership model. Sponsored shout out from Free Press Publications with the tagline of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement. You'll find daily news analysis and opinion pieces on global topics in both text and audio form at fpp.cc. What gave you the idea two years ago to basically dedicate 12 hours a day, seven days a week to make a decentralized cryptocurrency to fiat exchange? Yeah, uh, probably it started when I first heard about Bitcoin in 2011. I was completely fascinated. I fell immediately in the rabbit hole, in the fam infamous rabbit hole. And I, I, I wanted to do anything with Bitcoin, but I felt I'm too far away from, <laughs> from my technical skills or whatever. And I was working in a company, so I didn't have time. But uh, later I quit the job and wanted to do something on my own, which uh, yeah, was more in my, in my interest. And then I got back, and was it, especially in this time when Apple kicked out all the Bitcoin uh, <coughs> applications. Oh, and in, yeah. And in this time I wanted, uh, yeah, I was working on, app, um, on iOS applications <coughs> and was basically <coughs> had idea to, to go in this direction. But in this, it was short after the time when Bitcoin was rising like hell to more than $1,000. And I felt uh, I need to do something with Bitcoin. It's the momentum and I'm losing it when I'm not getting in. And I was trying to find a topic where, <coughs> where yeah, where, where, what interests me and where I could contribute something. And I found out the, about the project, what's called uh, Nash X. And it was interesting, <coughs> pro it's not famous at all. It was <laughs> a, a web page where you could somehow do a semi decentralized exchange. It was ne never working very well. And so, but the basic idea was interesting was a two of two multisig only and it was uh, the starting point where I have seen okay somehow it's possible it's difficult but when you m when you mix up the right uh, ingredients like yeah, the multisig the, in uh, the <coughs> security deposit the arbitration system then you you can make it work and and I yeah, tried to um, started a, a white paper and fig and uh, designed a designed the concept how it should work and then i built a prototype and was actually looking for developers because i thought now it's way too big for me and i cannot do it but i didn't find developers so i started to develop more and more and so it was going on then i found a few developers joining and yeah so it was growing over time people always told me it's completely crazy and way too big uh, way too big i should pick out a small element and make just that <clears throat> like a multi-sig wallet or so and i agreed basically but i couldn't stop and yeah got addicted to it and uh now, finally, this addiction uh, Golly. delivered some fruits. <laughs> Golly. Well, so the beta launch is the 27th of April. Uh, yeah. But as you said, the, the software is working now. And there are even like uh, dozens of offers on it right yeah. now for trades. So if someone, whether they want to try it out now or after the beta launch, how would they do so? Where would they go? Yeah, they can go best for the for our webpage, bitsquare.io. There is a download link uh, to a GitHub um, page where we have our releases. There are all releases for all operating systems, uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, and just download it, install it, and that's it. And oh. of course, there's a lot of information on the on the web page. There is uh, high-level information like explainer video and, and the white paper and uh, yeah, uh, FAQ and all kind of and we soon we get the forum uh, on the bitcoin web page as well so the community can be more active directly in the bitcoin forum we have a mailing list newsletter and blog so yeah and and a final question i'm 
am I correct in assuming that BitSquare, the peer-to-peer -peer protocol, um, if for whatever reason, um, a lot of users decided they didn't want to use Bitcoin anymore because for whatever reason, it wasn't meeting their needs, it certainly is possible to either uh, make, make it an option for another cryptocurrency to be the two of three multisig uh, trading pair option thing? Yeah, so as long as, as, it, as long as the other currency is similar to Bitcoin, like all these clones, which are basically based on the same uh, co uh, code, it shouldn't be very difficult, but of course it's work. But <laughs> it's a question what you gain from this. Mm -hmm. And I mean, actually I was in the beginning, I was planning or I was very interested to use Ethereum for this because I thought it's easier and I was not sure if I could do everything in Bitcoin, but it turned out it was not a problem and it was uh, perfectly fine to do it in Bitcoin. But Ethereum, of course, would be another, but then you have to rewrite a big part of the code because it's completely different. Right. So, I mean, one very interesting coin would be Monero for that because with Monero, you have kind of perfect privacy. And, uh, and then you would have on the, on the Bitcoin side, uh, you would have uh, all the privacy of Monero. And I think Monero supports uh, multisig. It would be just as Monero is very different to Bitcoin, it would be quite a lot of effort. And I'm using a SPV wallet, also Bitcoin J, to avoid to download the whole blockchain. And of course, that's a problem what you have to solve with, all, with any other uh, currency as well, uh, that you have an SPV uh, version, because otherwise you don't want to download a gigabyte or, or more mm -hmm. just to start the software. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Manfred, that is so exciting. And and as someone who knew about BitSquare like a year ago or whatever, it's it's so exciting to see your launch date really just come around for real. And so thanks for your time and 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 thanks for your software contributions. I I will probably try it out. Yeah, thanks to you for the interview and uh hope you enjoy it and Hope people will finally use it. <laughs> Very good. All right. Thanks, okay. Manfred. Thank you. Bye-bye. Today's episode is brought to you by Exmo.com, a cryptocurrency and fiat platform. And if you have an account at dashtalk.org and you have between 50 and 100 profile posts, send a message to Exmo and you will receive Xcode, which can be exchanged for real dash at Exmo.com. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Sure is nice to have you. Have a good day. There is no question that within cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is king. But could it be dethroned? Certainly. The pace of technological progress makes disrupting established players faster, easier, and cheaper than ever before. If Bitcoin is dethroned, it will likely be for one or more of the following five reasons.